thought to be more likely to become spiritual portals. So what kind of experiences have people had with mirrors? There are hundreds of documented cases of haunted mirrors and they tend to have similar characteristics. People have reported paranormal experiences when an old mirror brought into the home from somewhere else. People, when moving into a new home, have had problems with mirrors left behind by the previous occupants. People have reported paranormal activity after using mirrors for divination slash scrying. Usually no protection was used by the participants and it is thought that they may have created a portal. It's suggested that when carrying out any kind of spiritual work with mirrors to use a cleansing and protective ritual, if you are doing spiritual work that doesn't involve a mirror or other scrying device, then these should either be covered or put away in a safe place. It has also been observed that using a Ouija board can also create portals. Mirrors nearby are often claimed to be the origin of the portal after a Ouija board session. Often people have reported having experiences with haunted mirrors in hotels, friends slash relatives home, visiting a place as a tourist and so on. These areas usually, but not always, have a reputation for being haunted. The phenomena reported in connection with haunted mirrors are varied. The most common manifestation is the formation of images of people slash entities other than the people occupying the room. However, it should be remembered that natural distortions and curious light effects can create a number of bizarre effects. Added to this is the brain's phenomenal ability to create meaningful shapes and faces out of random patterns. But despite this, many of the reported cases of haunted mirrors were witnessed by more than one person at different times of the day, in various lighting conditions. Therefore, these cases may possibly rule out natural causes. Added to this, other forms of paranormal manifestations developed in addition to that connected with the mirror involved. Negative Entities, Energy and Mirrors The phenomena experienced by people are diverse. In most cases, but not all, the energy seems to be negative rather than benign. However, some of the apparent malevolence might be due to a fear factor, suggestion or misinterpretation rather than a negative spirit. Paranormal activity includes Shadow people. They have frequently been witnessed in connection with haunted mirrors. Witnesses describe not only shadow people standing near to mirrors, but also within the mirror and entering or leaving them. Quite a few cases also reported other phenomena at the same time such as, cold spots, voices, noises and orbs. Odors, ranging from pleasant to vile, have also been described. Strange Mist The mists are not only seen entering and leaving mirrors but sometimes form into more recognizable shapes, usually a humanoid one. Other people have described these mists evolving into dense dark masses that move around the room as well as within mirrors. The feelings reported by the witnesses are usually of a negative nature. Anger, hostility and evil are some of the feelings experienced. In addition, people have given accounts of other phenomena happening at the same time, cold spots, orbs, glowing eyes, growls, voices and poltergeist activity. Faces this is probably by far the most frequent manifestation reported by people in association with haunted mirrors. The faces are, most of the time, human, and sometimes known to the witnesses. But there are a number of accounts where people have reported other entities slash demonic faces appearing. With this amount of paranormal activity associated with mirrors, it's not surprising that they have the reputation for being portals. But what exactly is a portal? Spirit portals are not a new concept and have been around for some time. At their most basic level, they are thought to be a form of entrance and exit point for spiritual energy and other dimensions. It has been claimed that portals have been captured on film, usually photographs. People who have allegedly seen a portal describe them as being similar to a whirlwind or alternatively, an elongated swirling shape. Here are some of the characteristics of a portal. A portal is thought to be a hole or a window in the energy fields that surround the spiritual realms or dimensions. Energy beings such as spirits can slip through these openings into the physical plane. 
negative spirits frequently come through portals. This is believed to happen because the astral layer closest to the physical plane is an area where negative energy and entities reside. When a window opens up therefore, it's more likely for negative energy to pass through first. Most portals are believed to be a two-way pathway for both entering and leaving the physical level. Very high levels of paranormal activity are claimed to be found near portals. Many believe that portals are found all over the world and there may even be certain hot spots. Many believe that not only spiritual beings can use portals, but also beings and aliens from other dimensions. It is thought that there are special, but very rare, portals that are completely positive. No lower astrals or dimensional beings can enter these unless they are spiritually advanced. Some psychics and those who are developing their spirituality, claim that not only can they sense portals, but they can also close and open them up. It is thought by many that portals and vortices are the same thing. However many psychics and investigators believe they are different. That a vortex is simply a pure band of energy, neither negative nor positive and is not a doorway. It can however, be used for meditation and other spiritual work. Not all psychics and paranormal investigators believe that portals exist. Apart from mirrors, portals are thought to exist in areas of entry or exit within the physical realm. For example, places such as doorways, windows and even cupboards and wardrobes are potentially portal areas. As with any paranormal phenomena it's difficult to know which cases are paranormal or natural phenomena creating weird effects. However, one thing is certain. Mirrors will continue to play a part in psychic phenomena. Poltergeist. The phenomenon of poltergeist is generally believed to be connected to pubescent children. These youths are merely prey for the demons though, the young kids are not really acting at their own will. This period in a young person's life is, luckily enough, relatively short. When the affected person has grown up a bit and found out more about himself, the troubles usually stop. A grown-up person can be more severely attacked. A poltergeist, demon, is a separate life form and not the same thing as a ghost. When speaking about ghosts, people usually mean the spirits of deceased persons who somehow got stuck in the physical realm but wearing a body made of a lighter type of matter. The demons however, are not dead, they are simply constituted as amorphous beings, an existence very real but very hard to comprehend to any normal earthbound person. What is your name, the spirit who is here? I'm trying to connect to my father or grandfather, Otis Huff. Are you here? Are you here right now? I'm trying to connect to my father or grandfather, Otis Huff. Are you here? Are you here right now? Are you here right now?
Dad, are you still with me? Otis Huff, was that you that said Huff? So right off the bat, right after I get home with the recorder, it proves itself to me. So did my meditation, my prayers, and the attempts to raise my vibrational level. I look forward to, for, to what is to come uh, from all of this. I look forward to working with some of you one-on-one. -on -one. Thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoyed this. Love you all. Thank you. So I, I just have one more thing to add. The video is almost over, but don't expect to be seeing daily videos from me doing this. I still have my other work to do. But this was very encouraging. This was very amazing to me. That a little recorder, and there's never been any, any others like this, I just received direct replies to my questions when asking about my father. And while the second two were low volume, it's making me emotional because I miss my father. I'm sure many of you do too who've lost their parents. And just the fact that we could be able to hear them and the fact that I may be able to work with some of you and connect to your loved ones. That's amazing. That is absolutely mind blowing to me. From the Southeast Asian capital city of the Philippines, Manila, I bid you all good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be in the world's time zones, many as, and there are many of them, it's in fact afternoon as I speak to you here in my darkened room, I'm Art Bell, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is the largest overnight talk radio program in the world, it's called Coast to Coast AM. And I'm filling in for George Norrie, who's taking a well-deserved night off. And it's going to be a very interesting program tonight. And we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, let me fill you in on on some news here in a moment. First, first I guess, uh, all the ABs are certainly uh, healthy and well. In fact, if you go up to the, uh, the website, you will see a photograph of uh, the ABs at the zoo, the Manila zoo and what we're holding in our hands um the three of us is uh, yeah an alligator it's an alligator now they had a little tape around the front of his mouth there so that it you know wouldn't uh, eat asia or some part of us or something but uh it isn't indeed an alligator there's no question about it alligator and then a couple of birds sitting on our shoulders there kind of interesting uh, manila zoo is a uh, pretty hands-on stuff uh, let's see, what else is going on over here? Well, we have a big volcano getting ready to rip, and I'll tell you about that, too. 
during uh, the time uh, since I last spoke with you, we had martial law declared here. Well, not here in Manila, uh, not here on Luzon, but uh, down on uh, the island of Mindanao uh, in a place called um, Maguindanao, which is uh, sort of a large province uh, on the island of Mindanao. And there was a slaughter down there by... Uh, allegedly uh, uh, committed by the Ampatuans, the family down there that was in an argument with another family, and it was politics, and uh, I'm sure you saw it in the news, and they declared martial law. And for a lot of us uh, here in the Philippines, it was memorable of the last martial law, and it scared the hell out of everybody, frankly. But uh, martial law has been uncalled, undeclared, and so we're back to normal, but the investigation, of course, uh, continues. Mindanao is uh, troubled frequently by oh, terrorists of uh, varying sorts and uh, warlords and that sort of thing. Makes life interesting. Life is interesting here. Also, uh, I noticed earlier today, I was very shocked. Uh, the traffic here in the Philippines is, hmm, how to put this? It's uh, it's chaotic, and it's congested, but there is, after you've been here for a year or so, there's a, a method to the madness and a sort of a way it works. Now, when you look at the traffic here, you would assume that there would be dead bodies littering the roads everywhere, but there aren't. It doesn't move fast because it's too congested to move fast. So you don't have a lot of really terrible accidents, except the guys on motorcycles who are out of their minds, zipping around. They get clipped. But other than that, you get fender benders. And you don't really have, there's, Filipinos don't have road rage. So I saw a headline earlier today in the news that there was a manhunt underway for somebody uh, who allegedly shot somebody else over a road rage incident here in the Philippines. I went, What? Most Filipinos just expect that it's going to be terrible, and it's part of life. And so, you you know, you say, okay, that's the way it is. We're in traffic. You know, forget it. And then I looked a little closer, and sure enough, it's an American citizen. So, you know, if uh, it's the first road rage thing I've ever seen over here, frankly, and turns out to be an American, kind of figures. We have no patience on the road at all, huh? And especially over here. I mean, an American over here has just got to adjust. If you don't adjust, you will go out of your mind. So you adjust. You become sort of Filipino. I think that's happening to me. So, you know, a lot has happened. I mean, volcanoes. I'll get to the volcano. Martial law. It's kind of odd to be in a country where martial law is declared. I was actually in the Philippines last time martial law was declared by uh, Ferdinand Marcos. And uh, I never even noticed, frankly. Of course, an awful lot of disappeared Filipinos did. I was on an Air Force base at that point, close to Vietnam. Anyway, uh, let's look at the national news. You might really want to take a look at that Manila Zoo photo. If you click on it and then click on the next one that it takes you to, it gets bigger. So you can get a pretty good look. It's a lot of fun. Let's look at the U.S. news, uh, or the world news, I suppose. Obama brokers climate deal, but it doesn't satisfy all. Of course not. Two years of laborious negotiations on a climate agreement ended Friday with a political deal brokered by none other than our president, uh, uh, Barack Obama, with China. Now, China was being very recalcitrant. Uh, they just didn't want anybody checking up on whether or not they were really keeping the agreement and some other emerging powers. But the whole thing was denounced by poor countries because it was non-binding, set no overall target for curbing greenhouse gas emissions. The German chancellor, a leading proponent of strong action to confront global warming, uh, gave Copenhagen a grudging acceptance, but said she had mixed feelings about the out outcome, called it uh, only a first step. Now, I guess it, here it comes. After marathon talks, the Obama administration and Democratic leaders appear now to be in agreement with Nebraska Senator 
Ben Nelson late Friday to provide the crucial 60th vote needed for Senate passage of health care legislation. Majority Leader Harry Reid of Nevada uh, un- intends to unveil a final package with, uh, with changes in the long-debated legislation on Saturday, but he's confident it will prevail. So we'll see. Iranian forces cross, uh, crossed into Iraq where they seized an oil well just over the two countries' disputed border. Now, um, you know, Iraq and Iran had been, of course, old enemies since the fall of Saddam Hussein. Things had been improving. This certainly is not going to help. Get ready for snow. By the way, the temperature here is probably about 80 degrees or so. But uh, reading about uh, the Northeast, a major storm is moving up the Atlantic coast on the very last shopping weekend before Christmas. And it's threatening to shut down much of the region as officials warned of up to 20 inches of snow and significant power outages. People stocked up on groceries and other staples Friday after the National Weather Service issued storm warnings from the Carolinas all the way to Rhode Island. So, white Christmas coming up, folks, uh, in the Northeast. Sounds interesting, but I think I'll enjoy it from our 80-degree weather here. Okay, well, here we go. I'm sure you uh, may have seen pictures of it on um, CNN and elsewhere. There is a volcano a couple hundred miles to the south of me here in Manila. And it's a big one. And it's getting ready to go. Reading from a local news story, the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology on Friday warned that with Mayan volcanoes increasing restiveness, the chance of a hazardous eruption is now, in quotes, high. Alert level three remained hoisted over the Mayan volcano since an increasing trend is noticeable at present, they say. The possibility of a hazardous volcanic eruption is very high. Mayan volcanoes activity intensified with seven successive ash eruptions in a matter of two hours on Friday morning, 7.24, 7.25, 7.43, 8.32 a.m., 8.33 a.m., and 8.44 a.m., boom, 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 like that. They said the successive ash explosions are indications of an intensified activity of that volcano. He said seven ash explosions were also recorded throughout the day on Thursday. Radio DZMM, how's that, Uh, reported uh, that the 7.25 a.m. ash explosion went about a kilometer above the volcano's summit. They also detected about 248 volcanic earthquakes and tremors for the last 24 hours. They're saying if the volcano continues its increased activity, a major explosive eruption may happen very soon. Now, you may recall with Pinatubo that it affected the world's weather for some time. Now, I'm hoping the uh, the explosion is not that big, because if it was, it would affect us here in Manila, and I suppose it would rain ash. They've got an eight-mile uh, area, and they're moving everybody out of it. Well, they're trying to move everybody out of it. They've moved all the farmers out. It's a lot of people. I'm talking about between thirty and 50,000 people that the government is moving away from the volcano, but... Uh, the farmers keep going back. You know, they're worried about the crops. They're worried about their animals. They've dis- uh, they're talking about uh, a state of calamity. That's what they call it over here when this kind of thing happens. The military and the police on Thursday night began forcibly evacuating uh, residents who have refused to be brought to temporary shelters, which are located uh, outside the six to eight kilometer danger zone of that volcano. The Provincial Disaster Coordinating Council expected to evacuate all 9,946 families from the danger zone on Friday. So that's uh, going on, still going on right now. Only military personnel are allowed allowed inside the danger zone. And I, I must say, this could be a world event. It is a gigantic volcano. If you get a chance to see, you know, lava is spewing right now. So if you get a chance to take a look, take a look at some of the pictures on CNN and elsewhere. It's really something to see. It is uh, it is nature 
at work. And um, these kind of calamities just seem to sort of visit themselves on this part of Southeast Asia. You know what I really want to do? I want to drive down there and see it. There was another more minor eruption in 2006, and I almost went then. This time, I may go. I really, really, really want to see it. I'll have a little more news. We'll take a break, then I'll have a little more news coming right up. All right. Uh, By the way, I'm still working on my antenna project. I don't have the final, final, final permissions. Uh, Things over here on this side of the world operate uh, very, very slowly. And, uh, you know, you get engineers, and they have to make plans and everything. But eventually... With a little bit of luck, I'm going to have an antenna up on the roof here and going to be on the air. So it's getting closer, inch by inch by inch. The the paperwork is astronomical. From Paris, astronomers have discovered a new Earth-like planet. Hear about that? It's larger than our own world, may be more than half covered with water, according to a study published Wednesday in the science uh, journal Nature. The so-called super-Earth is about 42 light years away. Now, that means if you could travel at the speed of light, it would take you 42 years to get there. So it's in another solar system, has a radius about 2.7 times larger than that of our planet, they think. The discovery of the planet, called GJ1214b, represents a major step forward in the search for worlds similar to Earth. The newfound world is... Unfortunately, too hot to sustain life as we know it. That's too bad. Its density suggests, however, it is composed of about three-quarters water and other ice and one-fourth rock. So there are tantalizing hints that the planet has a gaseous atmosphere. Its temperature estimated, well, somewhere between 280 and 120 degrees Celsius, 536 and 248 degrees Fahrenheit, respectively. <laughs> No, we don't want to be there. With its host star about a fifth the size of the sun, despite its hot temperatures, this appears to be a water world, according to Zachary Berta, a graduate student who first spotted hints of the planet's presence. It is much smaller, cooler, and more Earth-like than any other known exoplanet. An exoplanet, of course, is one outside of our solar system. Berta said some of the water would likely be in crystalline form that exists at pressures greater than 20,000 times our Earth's sea level atmosphere. So even though it's Earth-like, it isn't that Earth-like. It would be good if we could find another planet that wouldn't be that far away. I use that term very loosely when we're talking about light years. Because the way things are going, we, we may eventually need one. This item, the Indian... Space Research Organization, or ISRO, has announced a discovery a little over a year ago that may indicate there may be life on the surface of the moon in some places. Now, wait a minute. The incredible discovery was yet another groundbreaking lunar revelation thanks to India's Chandrayaan a one probe. Those who have been following that probe, remember, it was the first lunar probe to detect signs of water on the moon. This, of course, was confirmed later by the United States and Russian many. The announcement made at the International Radar Symposium Friday afternoon, the discovery specifically was an analysis that indicated beyond a reasonable doubt that there were compounds composed of carbon. That is interesting. Carbon compounds, of course, uh, decaying, indicate that there was once living matter now dead on the surface of the moon. And it's not a large leap from there. If something we don't know about died on the moon, then there might be something alive up there as well. Well, I think that's hogwash. What I think is that, uh, yes, they've probably discovered decaying carbon something. And that certainly is interesting, but, you know, I I think most people agree or believe that the moon, our moon, was carved from the earth, like that, at the beginning of everything, shortly after the Big Bang. The earth came uh, into the path of something big, and there was a big boom, 
and the moon separated from Earth, right? Well, prior to that separation, there probably were carbon forms of, who knows, plant life, animal life, early animal life, whatever. And I think it's, it's, it's indeed a leap to suppose that there's life on the moon. I mean, what kind of life? There's no atmosphere. It's either real cold or real hot. It's not hospitable to any kind of life that we could imagine. What, what I do imagine, again, is that the moon was once part of Earth, and so I think that's where it came from. But, you know, it makes a good story. All right, listen, uh, coming up in a moment, after the bottom of the hour, we're going to be talking with the GIS. That's the Ghost Investigators uh, Society. Ghost Investigation Society. Uh, Brendan Cook and Barbara Macbeth are both members of the Ghost, Ghost Investigators Society, GIS. The Ghost Investigators Society is a non-profit organization dedicated to the investigation of ghosts. Now, not only do they conduct investigations, but also instruct, assist, and educate anyone who believes that they may be experiencing ghostly phenomena or You know, just some of you who are simply curious, in an effort to educate the public about ghosts, the GIS hopes the EVPs, the electronic voice phenomena presented, will help demonstrate that the consciousness, our consciousness, does survive after the body dies, and that these voices may help to give something of a different perspective about life, death, and ghosts. Now, personally... I hope that ghosts really exist. We can sit here all night long and take ghost stories. I'm not going to do that, although I'm sure we'll get some later. But I personally really hope that ghosts do exist. Now, if they don't, that doesn't mean there is not an afterlife. But if ghosts do exist, that does mean there's an afterlife. And that's, uh, you know, that's a, that's pretty serious business in a, lo- in a lot of ways for those of us who are uh, looking forward to uh, something of an afterlife, if you will. I, I know I certainly am getting close to it every day, closer to it every day, as are we all. So I hope there's an afterlife. And uh, the existence of ghosts would prove that. So it's a very important topic, and of all the things that we could do, as in taking ghost stories, I think that EVP, electronic voice phenomena, the ability of people to... And and it's not just my guests tonight that have done this sort of thing. It's people all over the world. Just average people like yourself. It doesn't take... It's not a big deal. All you do is get a recorder, go to an appropriate location do some recording, and I'm telling you, I have had hundreds and hundreds of emails from people who have done it. And after tonight, more of you will do it. You'll go out and give it a try yourself, and you will get these voices. These folks haven't written a book. They don't uh, ask for money. They're a nonprofit organization. Let me tell you, of all the guests I have on that talk about ghosts, I think these are the most credible of them all. There's no doubt about it. They are the most credible. So if ghosts exist, your idea or your 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 ability to believe in that, to grasp it, will be underscored tonight if you listen carefully. And I, I hope you do. A lot of people say, oh, I don't believe that. Stick around. Listen carefully and you may believe. It is. And uh, by the way, last week we were, yes, we were in Guam, the island of Guam, once again, which technically, as you know, is not technically, it is the United States and about oh, only a three-hour flight from here. Um, so, yes, Norman, in uh, Arizona, we were in Guam, once again, nice to set foot on U.S. territory. Um there's one other uh, note here, and that is, uh, Art, are you set up to receive Fast Blast tonight? Yes, of course. I'm really set up here. I, I can answer phones, hang up, um, whatever it is that I can do from there, I can do from here. It's really amazing. I, You know, to be able to do a long-form talk show from the other side of the world is, 
Maybe I'm showing my age. I don't think so, because uh, nobody else has ever done this, to the best of my knowledge, a regularly scheduled long-form talk show, you know, four hours, from the other side of the world of most of the listeners. It's astounding, simply astounding to me. And I, I don't astound easily. Uh, tomorrow night, Ian Punnett is going to be filling in for, uh, well, he's not filling in for anybody. He's just tomorrow night. So, <laughs> Ian Punnett, hi there, buddy. What do you got online for tomorrow night? Hey, Art, have you, have, of all the many things you've done in all of these many years, have you ever written a novel? No, and I, I'm sorely tempted, uh, Ian. I'd be curious to see what you came up with. I mean, I know that many of your books have been novelized, right, in a way in which they've been used in movies and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, and by the way, did you see 2012 yet? I did. It, it appear, you know, 2012, we're, we're kind of with it here. We have digital theaters, and right. it, 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 it debuted here the same day as there. Right, but I mean, did you see, it's sort of an homage to you a little bit, I think, in there. A little, yeah, bit, a little of bit of a Woody Harrelson character, a little bit. Uh, I, I love the uh, the idea of that late night talk show host driving the the storyline. Yeah. Well, and, you know, it's it's the same guy who did the day after tomorrow. Right. Oh, I tell you, right. I, and I, I wondered whether he had even sent you a note about that. Because yeah, no, uh, no. tomorrow night, uh, Jim Mars is going to be on, and he's written his first novel. Oh. It's called The Sisterhood of the Rose. Uh, and so Jim takes a lot of his research that he has been putting together for years in various nonfiction works, and he's assembled a, a a cast of fictional characters to help tell the story of something which he believes could have happened. It, it may still be influencing us today. Well, that should be a good program. I, I, you know, novels, novels are interesting uh, in and... I, I guess I would have technically say yes. I mean, my, you know, they were novelized. It's kind of protection for right. people when you're writing about something you think is going to happen, but right. you know, you're not sure. So, well, I'd like to see what you come up with. You're still a young man. You got. Uh, I'd like to. It'd be interesting to see if you actually sat down to write one. Would it be science fiction? Do you think? Oh yes. Okay. Very yeah, good. No, no Out question. into the outer reaches of the universe. Um. Actually, I've got to. Do, I don't want to talk about it, Ian. I, it's in my mind. Okay. You know how not, books are. It's in my mind, and I, I before I do it, I don't want to well, talk about fine. what it would be. Well, we'll yeah. we'll we'll book the interview uh, two years from now when you get it done <laughs> and published. Okay. All right, Ian. Look forward, Thanks, Jim sorry. Mars tomorrow yeah. night with yeah. Ian Punnett. All right, that sounds good. That sounds interesting. Yeah, I'd love to uh, to write a novel. Why not? It's it's been there for in my mind now for quite a while. That's the way books are. They kind of they kind of brew inside you until you get ready and then you start. Um, all right, in a moment, Barbara Macbeth, Brendan Cook, and the Ghost Investigators Society. All right, uh, let me read a little bit from um, the GIS website. It says the society is comprised of five individuals who have come together due to a common interest: ghosts. Every member has an equal standing in the society. There's no one of higher status than any other. I don't think they have a secret handshake. Some members may have more knowledge or have had more experiences on the subject, but all members have equal status. There's a coordinator to notify members of meetings, events, and investigations, and on occasion there will be a spokesperson when needed, but there is no founder, no president, or any other such titled person. Even though we enjoy what we do and we have fun when conduct conducting any investigation, we're also very serious about what we do. Our equipment consists, listen carefully, of cameras, tape recorders, sound meters, motion detectors, infrared, other such devices that help us find the spirits of the dead that dwell among us. While we realize that some members are more, in quote, sensitive than others at feeling or sensing a ghostly presence, we don't use psychics, nor do we encourage anyone who claims to be psychic to attend any of our investigations. Anyone can claim to be a psychic doesn't prove anything. We do not indulge in satanic rituals or, or witchcraft. It has nothing to do with ghosts. We do not perform seances or use Ouija boards. We discourage both and recommend to those of you who may indulge in this activity to discontinue the practice right away. The entities 
who may come to you during these circumstances are not the same as those who remain as a ghost. A ghost is normally linked to a place. And most ghosts seem to have a reason for remaining in this realm. Don't confuse the two, because they're very different. Some of our members have been conducting investigations and looking for ghosts for years. Other members have recently joined us and are just learning how to conduct themselves while on an investigation. Our societies very involved with each other as members, and we teach and help one another as a society, we not only conduct investigations, but also instruct, assist, and educate anyone who believes that they may be experiencing ghostly phenomena or those who are just simply curious. Sometimes we find that a ghost is not responsible for what we thought was some sort of ghostly activity. The general public has a misconception about ghosts. Most also have a preconceived notion of how a ghost is supposed to look. Most people are usually wrong about both. As members of GIS, we hope to help anyone who cares to learn and expand their minds in understanding. We also try to help ease the fears toward the ghosts who have chosen to stay and coexist among us. That's interesting. Chosen to stay. Chosen to stay. Brendan Cook and Barbara Macbeth, welcome back to Coast to Coast AM. Hello, Art. Good morning, Art. Good morning. It's, it is the two of you, right? Yes. It's been a long time. I hear that you guys have been, like, making babies, procreating. Some some of us have. Some of us are too old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, also, yeah. I, I, I also heard that, um, uh, that the, 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 this is going to be a little scary tonight. Yeah, you know, especially towards the end, uh, some people that we have played these voices for, they were a little unnerved by it. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I can't wait for people to hear it and, and see how they take these voices. Okay. Um, well, I, I read that little preamble because I thought it would help. I mean, you guys are nonprofit. Absolutely. You don't write books, though I'm sure you will one day. You don't solicit yeah. money. I mean, there's just nothing about you that says fraud. No, and, and you know, we have no reason whatsoever to defraud anybody. I mean... We have spent years and years doing this. I think this is our 10th year doing shows with you. And yeah, I think it I is. I mean, we have never in that time taken one cent for anything we've done. And we've had offers, especially through your program, from publishers, uh, you know, advertisements for our site, that kind of thing. And yeah, we've I always turned have. them down. Yeah, I bet you have. Um, and that's what, you know, over the years has impressed me so. You just have no reason to do this other than your 15 minutes of fame, but you've had that long ago. So, uh, you know, there's, I guess of all the shows that I do, um, EVP is the most convincing, maybe the scariest for a lot of reasons. Um, in the preamble, I, I read that, uh, I, I'm not sure who wrote this, you can tell me that the ghosts or spirits choose choose to remain here is that right i believe that uh many of them do for whatever reason uh they they stay i think uh, family uh grieving uh can uh cause ghosts to stay and not go on to where they should go um, concern for family and loved ones can cause them to stay okay uh, so that does imply uh, directly that you have a choice. When you die, if there's some reason you want to stick around, you can do it. I, I, I personally believe that. I believe that uh, we have choices in life, and we also have choices in death. Huh. Um, have, you made, have you come to any conclusions, either one of you, uh, about of those who choose to stay? Um, what is life, <laughs> life, what is the other side or the, this medium area that's in between? What's it like for them? Can they, can they see us anytime they want? Do they see everything around them, though we can't see them? You know, that, that's, it's really hard to explain. I do believe in, in a lot of cases they are aware of us. 
uh, and this goes into the EVP that we'll be playing, you can hear where they are actually interacting with us, um, whether it's questions that we're asking them or just even interactions that us as a group are having by ourselves that don't even involve ghost investigating. Uh, they will join in just as if they were part of the conversation with us. And another thing, too, in our physical bodies, we are so – it is hard to imagine not having limitations that we do physically. When you – if you consider yourself just a mental being without the physical limitations that we have mm-hmm. – um, your capabilities and your senses, I think, are completely different. Well, we all want to know um, what it's like, I guess, after you die. And one thing I've noticed is, of the EVPs that we play, if the person was old when they died, it's an old voice. If the person was female, it's a female voice. If the person was a child, God help them, there are so many of those, it's worrisome, uh, then you get a child's voice. So the implication is that you are on the other side or in that middle area what you were when you died here. Exactly. And but, you know, I've got to bring up, there have been documented cases where a person that has died has been witnessed by many different people in different stages of that person's life. Hmm. And so it makes me, you know, it could be a, um, you know, how we want, how, the, how they want to project themselves, I don't know. But I, I know that there have been cases where a deceased person has been witnessed in different stages of their life, young mm-hmm. and old. So the, the two of you, you've been doing this a long time. There's more than two of you, but you two have been doing it a long time. Are you... Uh... Has it has it relieved your concern of death? If you're, if Mine, you're I, I've never had a concern about death. Um, I, I, kind of uh, the older I get, I'm looking forward to it. I, I'm concerned about my loved ones. You know, I, I, I but I don't have a concern about death. No, wait a minute. You said you're looking looking forward. It. Yeah, I'll be glad to get out of this world. Yeah. I don't like how, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, that, you know, I don't like what I see going on, and I'll be glad to get out of it. <laughs> to it. How, about, how about you, Brendan? Uh, looking forward to it? No, I can't say I'm looking forward to it. Um, I can say doing this, uh, it's, actually, it's, it's raised a lot more questions than it has answers. Mm-hmm. Um you know, it's constantly been driving me to research it more and more. Each EVP we get makes me want to ask more questions and do it more than we have been. Uh, and ultimately, you know, I really don't know what I'm looking for. I don't know what that one thing is going to be that makes me go, okay, I, I, I've got it all now. I can just stop. I mean, I think I'll be doing this until, like Barbara said, I mean, until I die. Okay. All right. All right. Let's then let's get to it. Um, it, Now they're going to be playing these from um, the uh, the main studio in California, and so hopefully it'll work out well. And I'll just try and give good cues. But tell me what we're about to hear and where you got it. I mean, that that's very important, isn't it? The where. Oh yeah, yeah. The the where uh, the, the. You know, how, how the place looks, uh, the history of the place, and also, I mean, the context of what was happening at the time the voice was recorded. Uh, I, I did hear at the beginning of the show you talking about anybody can do this. Um, you yeah. can spend as much or as little money on it as you want. And that's ultimately why we've been doing this as long as we have, to show people, if you don't believe it, just try it. I mean, it's not going to hurt you. Everybody has something in their house that can record some kind of sound. Sure. So it's not going to hurt you to just start recording and ask questions. Look, I've had hundreds of emails, thousands of people uh, that after hearing one of these programs have gone out uh, with a recorder, you know, and great doubts, but interested. And they come back and they get something and they write me and say, wow, Art, you were right. 
So there's something to all this. No question about it. Um, all right, tell me where you go. And here's one more thing. This first one comes from a cemetery, right? Right, and actually that's that's why I brought up my, my previous point. Uh, the first nine, nine or ten voices are actually voices that have been sent into us over the years from people who have heard us on your show mostly and went out and did it themselves. Oh, that's cool. And now what's really neat is we, you know over the years how many children's voices that we've played. Right. I mean, there are quite a few. Now, this first voice was recorded by a lady named uh, Anna, and you're going to hear a man say, I got this EVP at Sun Prairie, Wisconsin Cemetery. Or, no, excuse me, he doesn't say that. That's where he actually recorded this. Uh, it's in Wisconsin, Old Rural Cemetery. Mm -hmm. You're going to hear a man, and this is the investigator, say, if there's any children here, please speak loud and clear so that I may understand you. You're going to hear him kind of walking. Then you're going to hear him say, I will be exiting your grave site. And after that, you're going to hear a child say, and this is the EVP, say, Mama doesn't want you here. Oh, God. Um, all right. Um, then all I'm going to do when I wanted to say, cut one. So, If there's any children here, please speak loud and clear so they may, I may understand you. I will be exiting your grave site. Oh, my God. Uh, I will be exiting your grave site. Now, that's from the person who took the EVP, but then you hear the EVP saying, Mama doesn't want you here. Oh, my God, the children. All right, one more time. Uh, let's do cut one. If there's any children here, please speak loud and clear so that may, I may understand you. I will be exiting your grave site. Ay, ay, ay. I, do you do any investigation? For example, that child's voice saying, Mama doesn't want you here, assuming Mama was... Was it was it the child's gravesite or Mama's gravesite? You know, according to uh, the email that we got the, when this was sent in to us, uh, it was actually a children's area of the cemetery. That's why he's saying, mm. "Is there if there's any children here, uh, would you please speak loud and clear so I may understand you?" Uh -huh. Now, another point: I don't hear the word "Mama," and many times we don't agree on what's being. Uh, you know, the EVP, what it is saying. And right. this is on, I hear a name, I hear Alonzo doesn't want you here. Really? Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm sorry back there. I need to uh, cut one, uh, one more time, please. I'm going to see what I hear. Cut one. Okay, hang on. If there's any children here, please speak loud and clear so they may, I may understand you. I will be exiting your grave site. Okay, I you know I agree. It could be either one. It really could be either one. So I'll certainly go with that. All right. Well, we're already at a break point here, so that's exactly what we're going to do is break. The GIS is with us. It's all about ghosts tonight. The Voices of Ghosts. I'm Art Bell. A new religion that'll bring you to your knees. Well, maybe. I mean, if you if you buy this, and I think I do, I've bought it for years because I can't find any holes in it, then it might be like a new religion, and it certainly might, either way, it might bring you to your knees. Just keep listening. I'm Art Bell, Barbara Macbeth, Brendan Cook, the Ghost Investigators Society are my guests, and they will be right back. All right, we're going to begin moving through these uh, a little more quickly at this point. These are actual recordings of voices from, I don't know if I want to say the other side, but um, certainly another side. Um, Barbara Macbeth and Brendan Cook, uh, again, you two, you think that that 
this is clearly all the way, you don't think it's clearly all the way over to what we think of as the other side or heaven or something like that. These are instead spirits who remain in some sort of, is purgatory an appropriate term? I think it's close enough, yeah. Yeah, it's it's a limbo, uh, some kind of medium place between where, you know, wherever they should be or I guess shouldn't be. Um, as Barbara said, I I do think that they, they probably choose to be here and they make the choice to go on whenever they feel that they need to. Mm. Um, I don't uh, think that the two worlds are very far apart. I, there's too many people that have experiences uh, with the ghost phenomena to um, say that it's worlds apart. I think they're very close. They intermingle with each other sometimes. You mean our world and where they are? Yes. Uh, as opposed to where they are and where they would probably rather be? Yes. Oh, no, wait a minute. You said they had a choice, so I guess they, they're happy where they are. Although, certainly. Um, happy ghosts. Yeah, and, and a lot not so happy, too. That's a worrisome part for me. All right, number two. Where? Okay. Okay, this one uh, that was sent to us was uh, recorded at uh, the site of a, a car accident that had taken place, uh, they said, about three weeks prior to this recording. And you're going to hear a woman say, hey, did you just stop and then go on and then go again? And then you're going to hear a man say, what's wrong? And this was recorded by Lacey. Okay, and sent to you. So here we here we go. Cut to Hey, did you just stop and, and, and go again? Okay, that's that's very easy to hear, but it sounded like he was whispering, what's wrong? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. And we record a lot of voices that are whispery. That's very common. Any idea why? You know, I, I almost wonder if it takes so much energy for them to produce a voice. And again, this goes back to what we've been trying to figure out all this time we've been doing this. How, how do they do this? I mean, how are they putting these voices on tapes or recorders or however it's getting recorded? You know, how do they do it? I, I Without mean, the voice box, you know. Right, because we're not audibly hearing these at the time. These just show up on the recording. We go back home after an investigation, listen to the recording at our house, and, hey, there's a voice that wasn't there. You would, so think, though, is, you would think, though, that if it takes energy, if they're straining to really get that voice across, they'd be going, what's wrong? Not, what's wrong? Right. It, you know, that they'd be pushing hard. But what do we know about where they are? Nothing, huh? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, n number three. All right. Now, this was uh, sent to us anonymously. Uh, the lady didn't want her name used. Uh, it was recorded in the private residence, uh, basically just a little background behind it. The lady believed that her house was haunted. Uh, she had heard us before and decided she was just going to do what we tell people to do and ask if there's anybody there. So you're going to hear the woman doing the investigation say, anybody want to talk to us? And then an EVP of a woman that sounds like she says, love me. Okay, let's listen very closely to cut three. Anybody want to talk to us? Just interjecting my own thought in this. I, I hear love me very clearly, but it sounds more lustful than it does mm -hmm. affectionate seeking. Uh, anybody concur with that? Oh, I do definitely. That's that's definitely how I took it. It wasn't so much, you know, when I when I read initially this woman's email. And uh, I saw the context of what she said and then what the EVP supposedly said. And she had mentioned that her grandmother had passed on just recently. Mm -hmm. You know, I assumed, well, maybe it's her grandmother. Until I listened to the clip and then listening to it, I, I said, no, that, that doesn't sound like a family member kind of love me. It doesn't sound like grandma. 
Yeah. Let's listen again. Uh, so once again, l- listen for the lustful aspect aspect of this. Um, cut three. Anybody want to talk to us? Well, um, maybe maybe there still is some sort of. Um, I, let, let me ask you: in in previous cuts, all the ones you've done in the past, uh, is there any indication that there is still the? Oh, what's the right word? I don't know. Still, still the sensation of um, sexuality on the other side. Not as I can recall. Yeah, that's an odd one, but, uh, you know, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, I, off the top of my head, I can't think of anything that we've recorded that would that would suggest that. But at the same time, we have recorded things where it seems like the person on the other side is expressing a want for something that's physical. Uh, we recorded a voice in a prison saying, I want a cigarette. I mean, mm. things that, you know, you wouldn't need on the other side. It's it's almost like they're carrying physical desires over to the other side, even though they can't do anything about it. My God, I hope nicotine doesn't follow you to the other side. I've had enough trouble on this side with it. Um, okay, all right, number four. And again, folks, these uh, this particular series was recorded by uh, all of you out there. The first how many? The uh, first 10, I believe. The first 10. How cool is that? All right. So th- these came from all of you. That really is cool. All right. Number four. Um, tell me about it. Okay. Um, a lady was preparing a video recording for her husband that was overseas, uh, her and her daughter. And you're going to hear the woman. Uh, he's in the military. And, and you're going to hear the woman say to her daughter, say goodbye. And the daughter says, nope. And uh You'll hear a, what sounds like a child, say, Kristen, want your mommy and daddy. And then a creepy man's voice says, say goodbye. Ooh. And this was on a video. Uh, she heard these voices after she reviewed the video. Yeah, she was completely caught off guard. I mean, she wasn't trying to record EVP. It was just completely accidental. Well, I imagine that happens quite a bit. Yes, it um, does. It, although I think probably most times people dismiss it and don't mm-hmm. think of it as an EVP, just extraneous something or another. All right, uh, cut four. Say goodbye. Yeah. Goodbye. Ooh. I don't hear the say part. I hear goodbye. I don't hear the man saying say goodbye. And maybe I'm just not listening carefully enough. Um, so as usual, we'll do uh, one more time. Cut for one more time, please. Say goodbye. Yeah. I don't even know if I hear goodbye. I'm not sure what I hear there. Um, but it doesn't sound pleasant. <laughs> no, not at all. And, again, I don't know if we mentioned this already tonight, but EVP, I mean, it is extremely subjective in that, you know, obviously we're telling you what, what we think the voice is going to say. Um, and so your brain is obviously going to listen for that. Right. Uh, and, and it could be even my fault for, you know, I, I'm taking her saying the woman that recorded this say goodbye. And then I hear that man and I'm thinking he says, say goodbye. Hmm. And either either way, uh, you don't hear the same thing because I, I disagree with a lot that others hear. (laughs) (laughs) So what do you guys do? You usually um, simply come to some sort of consensus on what was said or the most votes is what gets put down. Yeah, pretty much. That's, that's, that's pretty (laughs) much what we do. I mean, ultimately, it is the fact that there's a voice that should not be there, uh, and especially in the, the cases of the children's voices. Right. You know, we've mentioned this how many times? I don't know. Uh, it's in our protocol on our website. No one under 18 is allowed to go with us on investigation, uh, and a lot of these children's voices are 
very, very young. I mean, four or five year old kids. It's it's the fact that that voice is there. Yeah, I mean, there's been times when five of us hear five different things, yeah. you know. It's just, you know, a lot of this is very, very troubling, and the children's voices are probably, of course, the most troubling of all. Mm -hmm. um, all right, this next one, where from? Okay, actually, these next two were recorded by the uh, Colorado Springs Paranormal Association. Uh, and they're actually, they're, they're quite good. This first one, uh, was recorded by one of their members named Paulina and it was recorded in a bed and breakfast in a room called the red crag room. And in this room, apparently before it was a bed and breakfast, there was an old lady that used to live there and she was just kind of a shut in, in this room. Mm -hmm. And you're going to hear the investigator Paulina say, are you ready to go to bed? Are you tired? Are you tired of talking to us? And, of course, she's addressing whatever ghost might be there. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to hear what sounds like an old lady. Uh, the group that recorded this thinks that uh, the lady says, leave all of you. Uh, I hear I'm feeling real tired. <laughs> and I don't hear that. <laughs> all right. Let's see what all of us hear. Cut five. Are you ready to go to bed? Are you tired? Well, it may be the power of suggestion, but I, I can hear something about I feel real tired or I something close to that. Um, and it doesn't sound like a happy voice either. No. No, it sounds um, like she's very strained, almost. You know, you know, the other side is supposed to be, you know, I mean, the classic, you're supposed to be happy. I mean, it's supposed to be paradise or something close to it. But again, we're probably talking about this middle area that hopefully is not, is not what the other side is all about. I mean, the real other side. We'll, we'll do cut five one more time. See what you all hear. Listen carefully. That sounds so troubled. It sounds so troubled. Like she's tired or something. I mean, just. Well, again, um, you can't help but leap to some conclusions about the other side. Now, if you're in spirit form, you ought not be all that tired and probably don't sleep a lot because you're not in physical form anymore, so I don't... Huh. They're troubling, just, aren't they? Yeah, it's troubling. It really is troubling. I, huh. uh, number six, uh, where, where is this from? This is in the same bed and breakfast, and uh, one of their members, Charles, uh, asks, can you move the door? And this voice that they recorded said, that's enough, Charles. Hmm. Okay. Uh, six. Can you move the door? Whispering. Yeah, and again with the whispers, you're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it, it is pretty clear. That's enough, Charles. Um, but it doesn't seem responsive, does it? Can you move the door? That's enough, Charles. What does that's enough, Charles, have to do with moving the door? Well, and I, I actually asked the lady that uh, submitted these to us uh, from this organization, uh, you know, what was going on prior to this. And apparently that door had been known to move by itself, and they were doing a little bit of what they call provoking the ghost. Uh, that's mm -hmm. something that we don't do, um, but they were provoking, trying to make it do something. Uh, we kind of view that it's, like, it's kind of like a circus act, you know. Uh, nobody's going to really respond to that. At least we don't think so. Why do, why, do you, why do you not provoke ghosts? The main reason is because I guess it's the way we look at it. We look at these things that we're recording as people. They're, they're not entertainment. They're not, you know, a circus act. Uh, they're people that lived, 
they had families and they died and for whatever reason they're here. So we look at more as like a personal level and we try and talk to them, ask them their names, you know, what is it like where you're at? Are you happy where you're at? Things like that. Mm-hmm. Try to show respect. Have you ever had a voice that you suspect came from fully on the other side or or just from this mid um, area that we talk of? No, I, I don't think so. Um, I, I don't think if they're fully on the other side, I personally don't believe that you could record that. I think it is just them being where they're at now, uh, you know, this middle ground. Right. Where we're able to record these voices. I think once they do go to that other side, uh, there's just no way of recording them. They're there and that's it. Do you have any indication that any voice you've ever recorded has proceeded to the other side? No. Well, I don't. You know, the one thing I can think of is, and it's a voice we played on your show years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh we were in a cemetery, and we were just doing our normal thing, asking if anybody's there. And we recorded this really old woman. Uh, she just sounded upset and sad. Mm-hmm. And I can't remember, Barbara had asked something. I can't remember what it was. And then all of a sudden, this old woman just says, I'm completely dead. And it was just like almost the self-realization that she had had. And we had recorded her voice before. And once... We recorded that, that I'm completely dead. We never heard from her again. It's almost like she just suddenly realized they're looking for me when they're out here asking for people to talk to. All right. One example, sort of maybe. Um, Can we fit one in? Yeah, I think we can. We'll try. Um, Number seven. Okay. Now, this was recorded by a man named Dan from a Great Plains Paranormal Research Society. And it was a rural cemetery in Omaha. And you're going to hear a woman, uh, the investigator, say, want to talk to us straight. And then a child say, please talk to us. Mm, cut seven. Wants to talk to us straight. Clearly a child and uh, clearly saying, please talk to us. Uh, one more time, cut seven. Wants to talk to us, please? Oh, so that would indicate that... Um, the child wants to communicate, I guess, with, uh, with, with the person who, who says the first thing, talk to us straight, that child wants to talk to this side, yes? Correct. Yeah. Yes, definitely. And, you know, I, I wonder, and we've recorded voices that actually show this, almost a sense of frustration in the voice because they're talking in the EVP, but obviously we don't hear them at the time that we're recording. Right. And then you hear them again, and they just kind of seem frustrated that you don't hear them. Uh, all right. Um, you two were at a break point, so hold on. Listen, I realize that once you're sitting down in a slightly darkened room and you're listening to this sort of stuff, it can really scare the hell out of you. So I, I don't think I'd recommend this for children uh, and, and, frankly, some adults as well. I'm Art Bell. Good uh Afternoon. It is afternoon here in the uh, in the Philippines from Manila. I'm Art Bell, filling in for George Nori, taking the night off, and uh, it's great to be here. This is a very difficult subject. These are electronic voice phenomena cuts. They're cuts from I don't know some middle area before um, heaven or hell, I suppose. It's troubling. It's scary, and you know I'm getting some uh, fast blasts that indicate. Um, I'm not going to listen. Barry in Vancouver, B.C. uh, says we we refuse to listen. This kind of stuff is not for anyone. Well, this is the kind of stuff we do, and uh, it is not for everyone. And so fair warning, they're going to get even scarier as the night progresses. So um, 
you know, use good judgment. If you have a child present who's troubled by this sort of thing, don't let them listen. It's that simple. They will get more troubling as the night progresses. Okay. I've got email. If you'd like to email me, I'm Art Bell, A-R-T-B-E-L-L at mindspring.com, A-R-T-B-E-L-L at mindspring, M-I-N-D-S-P-R-I-N-G dot com. More G-I-S in a moment. You too understand, uh, I presume, that there are people out there who feel listening to this sort of thing is not healthy, not good for you, and beyond scary, just plain not healthy to listen to. Uh, how do you react to that? Well, their fear uh, uh, makes them feel like that. Uh, I've had so many people, I could write a book on how many people have said, I don't believe in this stuff, but let me tell you what's happened to me. Mm. It uh, Fear... Uh, is uh, I can understand people's fear about it. Well, and ultimately it comes down to human nature. I mean, it's it's the fear of the unknown, because that's what this is. It's unknown. We've been doing it for years, and it's unknown to us. So for anybody else who's never done it or never even experienced listening to it, I can imagine how fearful they might be of it. Are you pretty sure that listening to this might not open any personal doors that ought not be opened? Uh, I think Barbara and I kind of differ on that. I I don't think so. No, no, I don't. I don't believe that. I don't believe uh, even talking about it uh, makes things happen. No, I don't believe that. No, huh? Uh, you don't recommend the use of Ouija boards and that sort of thing, right? No, I don't. I believe that those are different entities. Different entities. Uh, but a Ouija board is nothing more than a, you know, it's just a, Cardboard you're inviting board in something it. in. That yeah, you're inviting something in. But as you, li- how does that differ? If you see where I'm going from listening see, no, to these, that's, that's, that's definitely a big where difference. Barbara and I differ because I, I look at it as you know, a Ouija board is really. I mean, I don't recommend people use it. I mean, if they want, they can. Uh, Barbara is dead set against it. I I don't think it's you know I, I don't think there's anything to it. You're you're playing with a piece of wood. That, to me, no, that's what you're it not is. playing with a piece of wood. <laughs> okay. It's promoted as a game, and it's and it's not a game. Mm. Well, you know, it is in one sense just a piece of wood, but when you sit down and play with a Ouija board, you are in fact inviting entities in. If they yeah, exist, you you're inviting them in. That's so right. when you listen to this kind of thing. Uh, how is that different from a Ouija board? A ghost is a person who has lived and has had a body. They are haunting that location where you recorded their voice. Okay. And you they think, are already there. And you think the entities that might come through uh, with the use of a Ouija board never lived? I believe that, yes. Yeah, that is, that is a difference. All right, good. All right, number eight. Uh, tell me about number eight. Um, this was sent to us by the historic Ghost Watch. And uh, Ed says, you're going to hear one of the team members say what quite abruptly. And then this ghost man says, talk to me longer. <laughs> talk to me longer. All right, cut eight. What? Talk to me longer. Yeah, yeah. Talk to me longer. It's quite clear. Um, talk to me longer. Um, we'll do it one more. I try to do each of these twice because I know people are listening very, very carefully. So here is number eight again. Please listen. Flash. Talk to me longer. Talk to me longer. I can't tell if that's a male or female. Yeah, I, I can't either, really. I mean, it sounds like it could be either one. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, this is interesting. I, I see uh, the next one coming up um, was recorded from somebody's answering machine? Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is, and it goes with a book that was written out I'd say 25, 30 years ago. Longer than that. It was longer. Was it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, it was called Phone Calls from the Dead. And it went along with the same kind of EVP premise that 
you know, loved ones that passed on would call loved ones still living. Trying to communicate. And this clip was sent to us. Uh, the man had said that there was no phone call that came in. Their answering machine just suddenly started recording. And mm -hmm. you're going to hear on this clip uh, the answering machine saying message four and then this kind of breathing noise. And then a man just says they're coming home. Mm, okay. All right. Cut nine. It's four. Wednesday, 8, 12 p.m. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> see, if I found that on my answering machine, uh, I would be... You'd probably move. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd be real upset. At the very least, I'd have my number changed. Um, not that one would imagine that might cure it, but they're coming home. Um, okay, that was clear enough. They're coming home. Any idea what that might mean? No, of course not, right? <laughs> no, no. I mean, had we been the ones that recorded that? Uh, maybe, but, you know, the guy didn't provide a whole whole lot of context behind the voice. Uh, he didn't have any idea why it would even show up. He didn't recognize the voice, anything. I understand. Um, all right, cut nine. One more time. You know, in a lot of movies made about EVP, of course, uh, the EVP for the, the purpose of a movie is never sufficient. And uh, inevitably in the movies, the EVP uh, turns into something much more tangible very quickly. And they're, they're hopping out of phones or computers or something like that and causing great uh, discontent and trouble. Uh, have you ever had any... Any brush with anything that, that is like that? No, no, no I haven't at all. Um, the closest I be, and this maybe goes back to what you brought up earlier uh, about opening doors or or something mm -hmm. like that. Right. Uh, we do believe that we have had things follow us home uh, from doing what we've done, and you know, I mean, I, I've lived in a house that was never haunted. And I did one investigation, and for a couple of weeks after that investigation, things started happening in my home. Uh, and then it just moved on, and that was the end of it. Yeah, well, how, how was it? Though they were kind of transient, probably in life, uh, <laughs> curious, wanted to know, you know. What kind of things started to happen during that couple of weeks? Uh, actually, my wife uh, was downstairs doing laundry. She was putting some uh, clothes in the dryer. And she did that, came upstairs, and we were both sitting in the living room, and all of a sudden we heard the dryer stop, walked downstairs. Sure enough, the dryer door was open. So we shut it and turned it back on, came back upstairs, dryer stopped again. Then we heard the door to the dryer slam before we could get back downstairs. Oh. Uh, things like that. We had things moving around, you know, places that we had left them. They weren't there anymore. Uh, and then they'd show up in the exact same spot a little bit later. Right. I mean, just... You know, your average, well, I don't want to say average, but it is your average haunting <laughs> stuff. kind of typical of, of haunting things. <laughs> um, We've had, you know, how, I, mean, I think you... every one of us have had experiences, you know, oh. something coming home with us. You too, Barbara? Yeah. But, you um, know, it, it doesn't last long, and uh, it just uh, goes with the territory, probably. Uh-huh. That's going to discourage a lot of people right there. I mean, going out and getting well, a voice maybe. Well, that's something that people need to be aware of, that it can happen. And we know. also need to mention Barbara doesn't mind it. She actually wouldn't mind them being there. No, the I don't place. mind, you know. But, you know, a lot of people do. They don't want living with them. You know, my husband is that way. He he gets upset when something follows his home. He doesn't like yeah, it. I, under, I understand your husband's point of view. Um. And and how do you comfort him when he gets perhaps upset at the fact that something has followed you home, Barbara? Uh, you know, he, he'll tell them to leave, that they weren't invited there and to get out, and usually that will work. 
Okay, so you know, they, but if they, you know, if you're living in a location that already has activity, 